Okay, so here she is, our little drawing. And the first thing you're going to do is like playing with paper dolls, if you ever did that. Um, you take your piece of um, plastic wrap that I gave you, and you kind of drape it. Gather it up here at the waist, and then make some nice little patterns. And then squeeze it together so it kind of holds. It, it will hold, you know, because it's that cling wrap. And, and it's nice to do this before you put any paint on because then you have it ready when we're ready to put it on and we don't have to fiddle around with it. So we create a little skirt and you can see I, I did a couple here and that's what, that's, see that's what I thought all of a sudden. It's like, hmm, <laughs> wins. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just passing that idea on to you. It's just because it gives such a lovely airy feel, if I can describe this, um, with these See, then there's these little patterns that the plastic wrap, they create that little pattern, and it kind of gives that illusion of that tool, right, that's all floating about while she's jumping. Mm -hmm. And this one here, you can see this figure is actually a little bit bigger than this one. And when I painted it, I thought, oh, it's a pity that I didn't have a little bit more room around her so that she could actually, you know, if I put a shadow down here, mm. she would actually be... Um, yeah in mid-jump, yeah. and if I put a shadow oh, right, right under her toe, she just landed on the toe, so that's up to you. That's your interpretation, but that's, that's I, so I felt I didn't have enough bottom. Mm. And actually what I thought on this one, this one just because I painted all the way out to the edges, this is one that maybe I would float, and since I, I cut this one, I, I'd have to fix it. But right now it's just a demo piece. All right, so that was the first thing. Just, you know, gather the skirt. And, you know, you can remember that. And while you're up here, then I might as well um, do the next part of the demo. And here we have my palette, semi-cleaned up. We are, you can use whatever colors you like. It, they don't have to be, like, pinky purpley. If you'd rather do them in greens or blues and turquoises or, you know, whatever floats your boat, uh, yellow, oranges, whatever you want. It works in any color combination. But I am going to use cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, and I am going to use probably my opera pink. Those are my three colors. And then I'm gonna use burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is probably not gonna be in the background. I didn't do it in the background here. Um, but, and if you don't have opera rose, use another red or another pink if you want to go that route. Or, or if you, uh, like, I can't stand pinks, don't paint pink, you know. Um, it's, you know, we all have our different preferences. And uh, if you look at my palette, my palette is, um, I think I, it's safe to say I have an overweight of blues on my palette. I'm kind of more of a blue person. Mm -hmm. uh, and even uh, the reds I have, these three, well, I have four that are kind of have red in them. This is quinacridone red, this is permanent rose, this is opera rose, and then this is permanent magenta. They all, mm -hmm. these three all have a little bit of blue in them actually, right? Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, that's that. So, so when I start, I always start with misting my paints. That's, you know, so they're, they're ready to paint. And you can see, I like to fill up my wells and I like my paints to dry out so that, um, that when I'm in the car and when I pack up and stuff, if I, you know, take a corner a little fast and the bag falls over, it's not like I come home and I have one color. Whoa. Mud, mud. So that's what I like. I know other painters, some painters, they like to squeeze out fresh every time. I'm not one of them. Yeah. And the beauty of watercolor, they're expensive, right? I'm sure you oh, yeah. noticed that. I'm a big fan of, and would suggest, if at all it's possible, get yourself the um, artist quality or the professional quality. If you get student grade, you get a bigger tube, but you know what, you don't get more pigment. It's just diluted with filler. Mm. And then once you want to have real rich dark ones, it's not gonna it's not gonna go there for you. So this is the cobalt blue, and I mix that up. So I, you know, I put the water on. I had a wet brush, and then I 
mush it around. The mushing around is a very important part of the painting process. Where I'm mi mixing up mm, my pigment and water, making sure that there are no little undissolved pigment pieces. Mm. And, um, and I can also judge how much water to liquid I have. So this one is kind of like a medium mix. It's fairly. So eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I always have two containers of water, and one of them is my dirty water, where I rinse out my brush, and the other one, my clean water, that I use to mix my colors. And now I'm gonna go and do the pinky one here, Opera Rose, it's a very bright, it's like a neon pink. I happen to love it. But again, if you're not really crazy about pinks, it's probably not gonna be the first additional color you're gonna raise out and get. But I love it. And it lifts out and it plays plays nice with cobalt and it plays nice with uh, the French ultramarine blue. See, it makes nice lavenders and stuff like that. So, that was that one. And then we're gonna go, go with the uh, French ultramarine blue, which is a traditional color been used for centuries. And if you only, if you were starting out and you only wanted to get started with a few colors because they're so darn expensive, and you, you would need the three primaries, and that would be blue, red, and yellow. So then I would say get the French ultramarine blue as your first blue, because that's a really versatile blue. Um, and the reason I wouldn't say cobalt is cobalt, as you can see, it's quite a bit lighter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, if once you need darks, this one is not, cobalt's not gonna do it. So then you would, you, you know, once you needed darks, you wouldn't be able to really make them. So that was the French ultramarine blue. Do I have enough? Yeah, I think I do. Um, that's the other thing. There's nothing worse than mixing your puddles and then you're in the middle of your painting, everything's wet and you gotta be fast before anything dries and then you run out. Mm. Ugh, that is really not fun. So you wanna make sure you make your puddles big enough. Uh, and then, that was pink, the two blues. I can take the burnt shinna out, but I don't think I'm gonna use it in this first go around. This is more what I'm gonna use once I paint the lady in, the dancer in, so there. And see what happens now. You see how now it's more blue, has a little bit of the pink, you know, of course in it, so it's maybe a little lavender blue, kind of that French blue or whatever. Now I'm rinsing out my burnt shinna, which is basically, it's kind of like an orangey color. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a dirt, like a dirty orange, and what, that's exactly what it is. You could mix it from mixing red and yellow together to get an orange, and then you take a little bit of blue in it, and that would tone it down, and that would make it burnt sienna. The only reason that's really the only reason I have burnt sienna on my palette is if you have to mix three colors together, you know, to get a certain shade, a certain color you're gonna go back and forth, back and forth quite a few times before you get what you're after. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of a convenience color. <laughs> yeah, it's a convenience color. So see what happens here when I uh, take my uh, brush that has burnt sienna on it and I have this water that mainly has the blues rinsed out in them. Mm, Can you see how it goes gray, gray is blue. It's still overweight of blue because I rinsed two blues out in it. But that's exactly how you tone down a color. Put and they're, they're called complementary colors. Blue is a primary color. Orange is a secondary color because it consists of yellow and red. And when you mix those together, you know, you get orange. And so basically, when you put uh, blue and orange next to each other, they make each other look brighter because they kind of vibrate against each other. However, as we just saw, when you mix them together, they neutralize each other. So that's very important to know. That's part of you know understanding colors and color theory. And that's what happens to a lot of uh, painters uh, and watercolorists in particular, because we mix a lot of colors. People, when they're beginners and if they don't really know about color theory, and you know they think that if they put one bright color on and then another bright color, it's gotta get brighter, brighter, brighter. And it goes the exact opposite. It goes dull, 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 dull. And they end up with what we in watercolor language call mud. I actually think we call it two things. If we like it, if we want it, we call it neutrals. <laughs> and that's kind of, you know, like this is a neutral, right? Mm. But if, it was, if something happens and that was not what we wanted, then we call it mud. Mm. <laughs> because there's room from, I mean, there's places where we need neutral 
toned down areas, you know. Anyway, so that was my little spiel on that. Now we're going to do a wet into wet application of the colors that I mixed there. Wet into wet is a watercolor term for mixing uh, or painting water on your surface first, wetting your surface first, and then putting the colors in and letting them float in the water and mix and mingle. It's my favorite method. And it's a method that is very particular to watercolor because, you know, oils or acrylics, um, pastels, there you're more like layering colors on top of each other. And once you put them on, they sit there, right? Watercolor, uh-uh, they don't sit there. Unless you paint on dry paper, then they sit there. But uh, wet into wet. So I'm not gonna worry about the ballerina at all. So I'm just gonna paint over the whole darn thing. What I am gonna do is I'm going to try and leave a little bit of an edge just right by her breast. And the rest, just gonna paint over it. And I painted into that a little bit too, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, you're painting over the ballerina. Yeah, I'm painting over the ballerina. Don't paint around her. But you said you're painting into her breast. I mean, yeah, I just did like this. <laughs> and then in here, it kind of went in like that. So, so much so for that. you're painting into the ballerina. You're yeah, painting, yeah. You're painting the whole page. Basically. The whole page, I tried here. to do a little bit like that, but it wasn't very successful. It was hold it up and let's see. No, it's kind of wet. And there was a dry spot where I don't want it. So watercolorists, we always have to pick up our paper and see the shine on the paper. Because if it's just sitting like here, I can't always see where I missed. You gotta pick it up. Oh, thank you. See, I need, I need a group of students to tell me where I need to paint the water. So this is a very important step. If you get a little hair, if you can get it out, great. And if you can't, just let it sit and let it dry with a pigment, and then you can just brush it off. If you try to pick it up in the middle, especially once you have color on, mm. oh, it's gonna make a huge mess. <laughs> so in watercolor, we have to learn to let things be until things are dry. Espe I mean, when it's wet like this, there's, you know, it's, it's still fine, but once it starts drying, you gotta just stay out. I don't care what big boo-boo you think you have in there. It's gonna get bigger if you try to fix it. Mm. Um, so you can see, I'm painting on 300 pounds, so that's kind of a really thick watercolor paper. But you can see even my paper, can you see how it's kind of bowing a little bit? Because now these fibers on the front of the paper, they're soaking up all that nice juicy water and the fibers are getting big and fat. And the little skinny cousins on the back, they didn't get any water. So I don't stretch my paper. Stretching means that you soak it and then you, you know, tape it down to a board and let it sit overnight most of the time. And I have no patience for that. So instead, you, you just spray the back and get that wet. And plus of that is that then it's also going to stay wet for you longer. Oh, cool. And then I just oh. kind of, you know, give it a little time and you can already see it's kind of, oh, it's relaxing. Oh, it's, it's relaxing. So that's, so that is my, yeah. <laughs> so, and now you can also see that it was like the shine was beginning to disappear a little bit. The shinier the paper is, that means the wetter it is, the more water is on the surface. And once it starts getting matter, that means the, the water is disappearing into the paper and evaporating. The wetter the paper is, the faster the colors flow. And once it starts drying, it slows down the colors. So. I want them to flow like crazy. So I'm gonna spend extra time on making sure that my water color paper is nice and soaked. And now, because I put that water on the back here, it kind of even clings a little bit to the board. You do not want to, if you want to wet the back, do not flip over your paper and lay it down mm. when it's wet, because trust me, my board's not clean. There's, it's not mm -hmm. too bad. But anyway, any kind of dirt that would be in your board would be on your paper. Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of a bummer. And so I can just see again, now we live in a very, very dry climate. So Even though today pretty. particularly is not particularly dry. Mm -hmm. but, but in general, we live in a very dry climate. And so we have to spend more time than the folks and painters on the coast or 
in some of the other humid places, wetting our paper. And we have to be a little bit faster when we paint because we dry faster. All right, so I think we're good. Now I'm gonna put in my colors. So I'm gonna start, and I'm just gonna use the big brush because I don't wanna get fiddly here. So here's some cobalt blue, and there is absolutely no rhyme or reason to where I put the colors. Just have some fun. Is she coloring over the ballerina? I am. What? Yes, I am. Oh, wow. And a little bit more of the pink down here. Then we want to go a little bit more serious, maybe. Get a little bit of the French ultramarine in. So you can see I can still kind of leave a little bit. I, I would like to have a little bit of light on her face mm. and on like her chest there. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm I'm in my imagination. This is a, this is where the light is coming down. There she's in the spotlight. Exactly. Right. Yeah. She's in the spotlight. So but I don't want right there. And I can put a little bit more pink in here. There. And um then there's, that's pretty good. And then if I really wanted to, I could, oops, I don't know if that was maybe not so clean. I could go in with a thirsty brush. Seems like there's some color on that one. Let's not go there. Um, thirsty brush just means a brush that, you know, is just barely damp. And you can go in, if you get color, a place where you really don't want it, and just lift it out like that. And then, and but you don't, I mean, really don't worry too much about it. All right, so. We have one more step. We have two more steps on this one because this is all, so we're basically painting almost like the whole painting in one go. Now I'm gonna take, what brush am I gonna take? I don't wanna get too fiddly, so maybe I'll take this one. Get some water on it. And now I'm gonna go in and create that skirt. So now I'm gonna go with some pink. And I'm kind of, Thinking about, and I'm going to go with French ultramarine blue. Oh, this is kind of a scary but fun. And uh, a little bit more pink. And so I'm already thinking about kind of like the direction of the skirt. And I want to have, you know, some color here because I want that, um, I want that paper to have something to pick up. I feel I lost my pink, so I'm gonna have to go in really quick. You can see this is not really ideal if you have to go in and remix again, but I want a little bit more pink in her skirt. There. I think we're good. And then comes the fun part here. Let's grab our little skirt and get it on her. Kind of see a place where I should have put a little bit. There. Um, let's put it on her. There. A little waist. And then, I want it a little bit more here. There. And then I'm just gently, I'm kind of holding it on her waist here. And then can you see how the, these patterns are coming? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you can play around with it just a little bit to make sure you get some good patterns that you like. And then press it down. Okay, I think I'm good with this. Maybe pull it up a little bit here. There. Okay. And then I just have to let it dry. Do you use hair dryers? I use no. Them. Why don't you use? I hair don't use hair dryers because I need the movement of the pigment. When you put a blow dryer on it, a hair dryer on it, it just stops it. And I'm after that nice flow of the colors. That's kind of my painting method. Um, so, and especially like here, I want this to have time to react and it creates these little patterns um, that I'm gonna use in my painting later. I think so maybe you I should never take it use hair dryers? Hardly ever, uh -huh. hardly ever. I mean, I can't even remember when I last used a hair dryer. And also if I'm painting with masking fluid, 
you never want to put heat on with the masking yeah. oh, with really? masking fluid. Right, oh my, it's going to burnish it into the paper. And you'll never oh. be able to get it off. So what I do, I'm not a patient person. So you know, watching paint dry is not my favorite, you know, idea <laughs> of spending my time. I instead to keep myself, you know, from doing something too early, I just paint on another painting. I always okay. have more than one painting going oh, because yeah. that way I can give the colors the proper mm -hmm. time because, sure. you know, even though I can't really see it anymore, but these colors are still moving. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it when we when we um, pick it up. It They're still going to be moving. And that's where you get those lovely transitions. Just, but that takes time. Mm -hmm. You've got to let them do their yeah. thing, so I to speak. My little ballerina has dried. So I can take off the masking flute, not the masking flute, but the um, her skirt, the little plastic wrap. And uh, here's what I'm left with. And I think that's going to work just fine. My only problem is I can't really see her little foot. Oh, it's there. And there's the other one. All right, um, I'll probably have to uh, redraw that, but that's okay. I don't have to do that right now. I'm going to start with this arm of hers. So um, for the um, skin tone, I'm going to use a very, very watered down burnt shinna, which I have here. And the light's coming from this side, so this side of her arm will be light, and there will be shadow on this side. There will be uh, some light on her face and a little bit on the front of her um, neck. And then this arm will may mainly be in the shadow, um, and so will this leg. And uh, that works out fine because, you know, I've got some color on her, but it all doesn't matter. That's all okay. Uh, first, I'm pour, putting a little bit of water inside. Make sure I don't have too much water on my brush. Her little hand and her arm. I'm just going to put a little bit of water inside just so that things will flow. And um, I'm going to have to turn her around so I can get to her easier. And I'm just going to run in. A little bit of that burnt shinna, very watered down. And go up along her arm here. And we know that watercolor dries quite a bit lighter than what it looks when you first put it on. So I think this will dry just fine back to what I need. And uh, a little hand here. And want to not have a hard edge right here, so I'm just gonna run that up and around when I can, just so there's no hard edge. And then right away, I want to go in and then just drag that burnt shinna out to the edge of her arm. There. And I think I want a little bit more shadow on the other side of her arm. So I'm actually going to go in with a little bit of that purple that I created here with um, the pink. And while it's still Damn, I can just run in a little bit there. And there's her hand. Lovely. That's going to go off the page. Okay. That was the uh, first arm. I think that looks pretty good. A little bit more shadow color right there. Yeah, I like it. See how that already gives it a little shape when you do that? Maybe even a little bit more shadow color there. All right. And um, then let's do the other arm. And that's going to be the exact same thing. 
we're going to run a little bit of water inside the arm and out into her hand and tiny bit of the burnt shinna and here we have the strap from her her top that's going to be a border for us with the arm and the neck so we don't have to worry about that Should a little bit more color in And just let that run all the way down. I'm using my number 10. It has a really great tip on it. That's that brush I got from the SAA as a free gift after I bought the masking fluid, the PBO masking fluid and the new PBO uh, uh, pen from them. So that was quite the deal. And there's like, you can see a little bit of that other little finger there. I don't want to get too nitty gritty with the hands and the fingers. So now I got the uh, Burt Shenna in. And then we need to run a little bit of that um, shadow color in. And it's going to be mainly from the bottom here. The whole arm is in shadow, but of course the bottom of the arm is going to be even more in shadow. So here, a little bit more, and here. There. Let's see, how does that look? That looks pretty good, I think. A little bit more about Shanna. Yeah. All right. Let's fine tune that. So that was those two parts, and then let's see here. Um, and we have her face and her neck. And the face and the neck, I'm just going to put a little bit of water in. I'm not going to worry about um, hair and ear and all that stuff right now. Right now I'm just going to run in a little bit of the burnt shenna and I keep it very light on the front of her face because that's you know she's kind of looking up towards the light you know she's in the spotlight she's you know the ballerina and then I can go in and do a little bit darker here with her hair and then just kind of drag that out but right now I'm just getting color on the whole gal and not worrying too much about what's what a little bit down the neck there and let's drag that color up here And then I want to put a little bit of that shadow color, the pink purple here on the back of her neck. That's definitely going to be in shadow, a little bit more of the burnt shine in. And then underneath here, and uh, might take some of the burnt shine. and put a little bit of French ultramarine blue in. And start 
giving her hair a little bit of a tone. Not too much. You can always do more later. There she is. See her? And uh, I'm going to leave that alone for a little bit. And then I'm just going to have to retrace her legs because I can't see where they are. And then I'll be back. Okay, I found her feet again. And um, I'm going to just put a little bit of water in up into the skirt where her leg is disappearing and I'm just going to put a little water. I'm not going to worry about the little ballet shoes right now. And again, just some water down. Burnt shinna. I'm going to run that in. A little bit more. And then I'm just going to let her leg disappear into the skirt. Soft edge. Lift out a little bit there. And it's just going to disappear into her skirt here. That's how it would be. And I'm going to put a little bit of that shadow color on the back of her leg. And here, down here. All right, so that was her leg there. And then we have the other leg, which is really also in shadow. So we're going to do the same thing, put a little bit of water inside and again we're not going to worry about the shoe and the leg where they where they um, where they are, where the shoe is. Just going to put a little bit of water in and then I'm going to start from down here and do the same thing, just run some of that Put Shanna in, and then her leg also is going to disappear into the skirt. And I'm going to just lift that out a little bit. Oops, I think I gave her a crooked leg here, so I'm just going to pick that up up there. Um, a bit more there, and. I'm going to uh, get a little bit of that shadow color on the shadow side of her leg. That was too much. It's okay. It's so watery. I'm not going to worry about it too much. And I've got a little bit of that bird shadow that wants to run out there. Pick that up there, and I think she her leg needs to be a little darker here. So I'm gonna put a little bit more of that shadow color in. That's burnt shinna, just a little stronger version, and now I'm putting the purple in. So now I have to let that dry and make sure that nothing is too defined here. That leg just disappears into, into the skirt. Still having problems with this little area. Yeah. Alright, so now we have to wait for her legs to dry.
Okay, while we wait for the feet to dry, let's uh, give her chop a little color. I mean, we could leave it white, but I, I think I want to give it some color. And I put a little bit of water in, and I think I want to give her a pink chop. So I'm going to put the pink on. And I want it really light out there. And then it's going to be darker here. So I'm going to put some of the purple in here on this side. Here. And then I'm going to rinse out my brush and make everything join. Put a little bit more of the darkness here. Just a little bit there. Boop. Yeah. There. I like that. And I have a little bit of white paint here. I have to uh, fix that later. That's okay. Make sure I don't have there. Okay, so let's see her little shoes. Um, I think I'll just give them like a dark, darker color. Use some of the burnt chenna, some of the pink, and then I'm going to use some of the French ultramarine blue. color. I think that'll work. And so her shoes are like that. Down into the tippy toe. And Here on the other leg, we can only see kind of like the front of her shoe. There, a little bit on the side here, I think. There, and then she has some tied, like they do. And the other one, also have them tied. And then a couple of times around the angle is how that works. There. Okay. We've got her shoes on. Pretty okay, I think. It's too too bad I have it so far down. Can't really. Well, I will. Would have been better if she'd been up a little bit higher. I don't know. She might be mid mid air. Not quite sure. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a light purple color that I'm creating from my leftover purple here with the the. Um, so I'm just gonna. Create a little shadow there with the French ultramarine blue and the pink. So I'm just going to drag that out there. A 
there. And then we need to give her hair a little bit more color. And so I want to go around her little ear, which is here. darker down here. And it's going to be dark in there. And let's drag it out a little bit. It'll be lighter up there on the top. Run in a little bit of darkness here. And then I'm just going to drag it out. There. I feel like even running in a little bit darker here. I'm just fiddling. This is really not necessary. Be so fiddly with it. All right. That way it gives it a little bit of shape. See that? And I don't really think I want it quite that hard edged right here. There. Soften it up. There. Okay, so now we got to be really careful. I want to put in, you know, with little Figures like this, you really, really have to be careful that you don't overdo it. So she has a little bit of a shadow thing in her ear here. So that's her ear, right? There's a little bit of shadow inside there. And then I will just indicate eye, little shadow under her nose and her mouth. And I wanted to give her a little tiny bit of shadow underneath there. I think that was too much. Wince this one out. Take that away. There. There's that. So you just want to give her just a little bit of features, but not much. I also want to soften here the shadow under her nose. There. It's, it's so easy to overdo this stuff. I think this is good. I kind of sort of feel like there would be a little bit of shadow. Like right here. Just barely, but a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I th and then there was a couple of little fixes. Here, I had that burnt chair that kept running. I'll try and lift that out. And then I had a little bit of a white showing right here. Take that away. And then all we need to do is give her a little sash and the sash I think we should probably give her like a don't you think she needs a purple kind of bluish purple sash I, I do 
so there and it'll be this one here and then goes like here and then a little bit more there and then I want to just let it disappear into the skirt there and a little bit more there she is I think this is pretty okay. All right, I think we got ourselves a little ballerina. So I hope you can have some fun with that. And um, I wish you happy painting and see you in another video.